asking yourself why a Viper V10? The answer is pretty simple. After scouring the internet and finding my way to every barely credible website out there, there was one undeniable truth. Size does matter. And when it comes to motors, there are a few bigger than this one. Am I compensating for something? Maybe. But the time has come for us to figure out if we can actually mount this motor in this chassis. This is right about where we wrapped up video number one, and we can see how this is all going to mesh together now that we have the front subframe in place. The frame rail up here, this distance right here is what we need to make up. But we knew we were going to have to modify the oil pan, and we are essentially as high into the chassis as we can get with the motor with the current shaping of the trans tunnel. Originally, I didn't want to cut this car, but after getting it, finally going over it and realizing kind of how much of a bucket it actually is, I'm okay with making some space to fit this monster motor. Alrighty. More junk. Oh, that is, stuff is bolted in. <laughs> okay. Haven't taken one apart like this in a long time. Now that everything behind the area where we're going to be working is removed, we can go ahead and start cutting. On the back side here, you can really see how much abuse this trans tunnel took from people, including myself, hammering on it. Now we have a nice big opening to fit the motor and transmission into. The other thing that we are going to cut is this little section here on the core support so we can make room for our straightforward intake and then also get those out of the way for our radiator. Oh yeah, that is sitting trans already. Is it touching right now? Yeah. Alright, so we're bottomed out on the trans a little bit. Further back you come, the closer to that booster you get. Okay, so there's a little bracket on the side of the trans right there that is probably keeping us from getting the angle that we need to get on this thing. We're also still hitting right there, which is another bracket that doesn't need to be on the trans. Smooth out these little brackets here just to get a little bit more clearance. Let's give this another test fit. What we're actually hitting on is what's left of the trans tunnel right now. But we did manage to make it a little bit further back into the chassis here. You can see this is literally as of right now as far back as we can go. And we are touching right here on the brake booster. I thought that this brake booster might be an issue and this is actually one of the pretty thick ones that comes on these chassis. There's a couple variations. So thinking that it might be a problem, I went ahead and ordered 
one of the thinner ones as you can see much much thinner which may help our cause so let's go ahead we'll get this swapped over Look at the difference in thickness there. Well, that gained us a little bit of clearance, but it is still the diameter is basically the problem. See, we're further forward than we were previously. Boy, that escalated quickly. Things escalated quickly indeed, but you can see that with the carpet put back in place, I have reinstalled the dash bar just to give the chassis a little bit extra rigidity wherever I can since we cut out pretty much the entire trans tunnel. But you can see, gas pedal is in the same location that it would be normally it's going to be tight tolerances with the trans tunnel that we're going to build but that little hole in the carpet there is where the stopper would go for the gas pedal so you can see that we still have plenty of travel for our gas pedal and also our shifter location is in a much much better spot with the motor pulled back this far and i have mounted the factory trim piece from the dash so you can see what we're working with as far as our shifter location and then also clearances we're going to have to make a panel to go above this but at the same time we're looking at just minimal modification to the center console and then also the trim piece here in order to fit what we need to fit in the interior before I left last night, we got to talking and we just realized that if we went with a manual brake setup, which I will be purchasing sometime very, very soon, that it would allow us to move the motor so much further back into the chassis and solve tons of issues for us, including the weight balance on this car. It's going to help out as much as possible for it to be this far back. And because we had already cut up the firewall and we're looking at cutting, welding, modifying, why stop where we had stopped previously. Most importantly on the underside here you can see that the subframe has gained about two inches of height just with the movements that we did and we still have not even modified the oil pan which we knew we were going to need to do. And the biggest hurdle that we're going to face here is this steering rack to steering shaft junction with the starter and luckily these cars it is very very common to move the steering rack forward by modifying the subframe this is about as far as i can take this car by myself right now it's time to recruit some professional help So same issues that we were fighting before, you just have a little bit better visual on this now. Really our last hurdle 
is just getting that starter to clear with the steering junction. Well, some of the stupid stuff continues with this car. We need to get to that bolt in there and the subframe has been modified in such a way that they blocked it. Genius. Without the rack in, those are what our clearances are looking like there. And it's definitely, definitely, definitely tight. Very much so. But really, it doesn't look too, too bad. It's tight, but it doesn't look too, too bad. What are your thoughts? It's tight. <laughs> It'd be nice if there was a tubular subframe, that's for sure. Uh, you know what, maybe I should have looked into that. <laughs> if you think completely changing the motor mount is beneficial, then we can certainly do that. I feel like making an almost tubular one is not that crazy. Since we don't need half of the shit on the way. It's not I mean, it. it's, yeah, it's really almost what you have to do is like cut off it. like the outer point and box it and then yeah, build off like, of that. Yeah, but I just need like the ends to stay the same. If you could bend a tube that came down to as low as this is, but is only like an inch and a half thick, it could save us, give us a pan depth too, yes. which helps with the capacity. So, this is why I needed to get the car here because looking at it with Josh and spitballing exactly how we are going to make changes to this to get everything to work, I think we're just going to have to basically build a completely custom subframe in order to get the most out of the clearances that we need. It has been a couple weeks now and Josh has got a chance to work some of his magic on the Viper Swap 240 here. He's only sent me a couple little teasers of him messing around, welding on some stuff, bending some piping. So what we're gonna be looking at is a essentially fully mounted motor. We might not have to do some little tweaks here and there. And then we're gonna dive into some of the other parts of the fabrication for the car. So this is what we aren't gonna be using. Yeah, I didn't want to use these stock mounts. They're really bulky and we have minus zero space to work with. So I made some uh, generic small slim mounts that mount right to the subframe that I also made, which I cut all of the stock. Basically kept just the ears where the control arms go because there's some geometry that I was not trying to do myself. And yeah, I got rid of all the stock stuff which clears up a lot of room for the oil pan, a lot of room for the power steering rack to go where we need it to go, which is super far forward and to the driver's side. And yeah, I think it worked out. Look at this thing. Just, just it being supported by itself without jack stands under it or a support across the uh, shock towers is a thing of beauty here. As you can see, we got the preliminary mock-up of the oil pan down there. We will get to that, but look at that beautiful tubular subframe. And as Josh was just saying, the rack back there, you can see what we're working with now as far as the rack placement to clear that starter. And it looks like there's Plenty of room, actually. Whatever you worked up there looks like it uh, worked out quite nicely. Yeah, if you can see, the wheels are on, the toe is set to zero, the steering wheel is straight. I don't know if you can see in the windshield, but it took us some work, but it happened. It's basically like a real car again. The placement against the firewall, kind of like the, the measuring stick that we were using, more or less, was kind of where that fitting on the fuel rail was close to the firewall and that is basically exactly where i had it so it is where we thought we could put it as far back into the chassis as possible but i suppose now the real magic is going to be seen from the underside if we can put this thing up in the air 
So this is gonna be kind of a pretty hilarious combination, I feel like, of stock pieces on this car between the control arms, the whole knuckle assembly is still factory. And first thing I notice is that we have a shortened tie rod here on this side, and then a lengthened tie rod here on this side. And what Josh was just talking about is that spacing right there. And from the bottom side, it definitely looks a little bit tighter than the top side, yeah. but that is all we really had to work with, right? Once I got it in place, I realized that the this boot was squished, this boot was lengthened super far out, so I realized that it was just offset way too much. So I chopped this one shorter, used the piece that I chopped out of this one, added it to this one, and got the geometry back to be able to have zero toe basically which is what you want zero toe you want full rotation this way full rotation this way the same rotation left and right which was not what was happening before and uh yeah just had to get the steering wheel lined back up straight set the toe to zero and we're good to go now i feel like a kid at christmas looking at how much progress he has made on this thing in an extremely short period of time really just most of the way but a little bit of fine tuning that still needs to be done you can see the mock-up of the oil pan which is really kind of the thing that i was most scared of i don't know as far as the fabrication side what's been the worst yeah if you look at it it kind of doesn't make sense until you realize that this side exhaust has to come across under and out this way which is one of the big big puzzle pieces and i believe that i touched on it earlier in the video right. but obviously you can see there is no way that you are fitting an exhaust anywhere through here to come back this way so we knew <laughs> <laughs> an excellent, excellent demonstration. So we knew that we were gonna have to cram everything out this side. And look at what we have come up with here. That is gonna go right under through there. And then there will be probably a merge pipe somewhere in this area between the two. And then we're gonna go single out the back. Is that the plan right now? Probably a single four inch. Uh, I think that supports plenty of power. For the time being, this car is going to be NA. As you can see, we are cramming as much stuff into this engine bay as possible, and there's just not room for any sort of forced induction. I made a joke in the first video that some nitrous might be the way that we go, because this motor is built for boost. The ring gap on it, it can handle some added pressure. We're not gonna be able to do that with a supercharger or a turbocharger, so maybe nitrous is gonna be the option there to squeeze a little bit of power out of it. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves there. That's assuming that we can actually get everything figured out on this and get it running. One piece in my excitement that I didn't even mention is the trans brace back here. And this is tucked up there. Very, very nice. This is the OEM mounting assembly. The LS brace used the exact same mounts. So we went ahead, reused that, and look at how nice tubular tucked up in there nice because we're gonna need all that space for a four inch exhaust to be coming from the passenger side of the motor right through that opening there. One thing that you probably still have questions about though is the cooling system. I jumped on CSF Radiator's website, went ahead and picked up several pieces that are gonna help us with the cooling situation. We've been working with CSF on several projects here on the channel, some of which we haven't really even gone over. When I knew that I needed cooling solutions for the 240SX here, they were the people to go to. And you can see we have an assortment of different pieces. This one is actually a dual split fluid cooler so the bottom half is going to be engine oil top half is going to be power steering and then everything else that we have here is going to be for the radiator itself a couple people mentioned down in the comments that they thought that a rear mount radiator would be the best solution for this car and i do really really like that idea because it solves two issues one the volume if you have the radiator in the rear there is so much fluid in the system that it's really only going to help keep everything cool. The aluminum lines that would go to the rear would help dissipate heat. We have a very, very similar setup to that on the R8 go-kart, and it enabled us to really use a nice, big, massive radiator on it, so we know that thing is gonna keep it cool. But from the factory, it uses three small radiators at the front of the car to keep everything cool, just because there's so much volume in the system. 
But I think that what I want to do is I want to keep everything at the front and I have in my head at least kind of figured out. And as long as we can get enough volume in the system, I think that we will be pretty good. These two pieces right here are actually heat exchangers for a supercharger. And these are CSF's off the shelf upgraded pieces. They're kind of like a universal design. And what I want to do is I want to combine both of these to be the main radiator. And then this piece is a nice, awesome, they call it a drag radiator and it's kind of a custom setup it actually comes with a fan already on it and we are going to try and stuff that into the passenger front section of the bumper that is going to be basically right behind this area here we'll take advantage of that opening and all of that combined should give us hopefully enough volume in the cooling system looks like those two will fit there and really what I was trying to do with this is take advantage of the depth that I have there. There's not a lot of space dimensionally, width and height wise, but what there is is a lot of depth. And we're gonna have to trim the front bumper a little bit, but you can see that if we can combine those two cores there, it will really give us a lot of volume in the system. visualization oh, that, that one's good yeah. so that'll go just like that and then obviously we just need a little bit of trimming right. but that actually fits that width wise which is nice so and then the other thing too is that if we're going to be building end tanks for these and everything like we can pick up a lot of volume just by like making the end like tanks it. huge oh no it's not that okay that's all right hey look at that we are not doing too too bad Look at that tucked in right there. That's not even changing anything yet. So and if we I need to. Higher, uh, as angled as I could to give you a real, I mean, yeah. it's not on the ground, but. It definitely, I mean, I, I don't think it's gonna go forward though. Exactly. If anything, you know, that's essentially the closest that it'll ever be where if it's suspension traveling up, yeah. you'll be at the uh, going away from you. But yeah, and if we need to trim a little bit, out of here maybe to move it around a little bit but it looks really really good oh, in the opening there as far as airflow goes and then we might be able to build just like kind of like a basic duct so pretty much all the air coming through that bumper goes right to it this is actually coming together somewhat as i envisioned it more or less it looks like it's all going to work it's going to take your your custom touch to get everything to work but the only other thing is on this side but i think that cooler is small enough that we are not going to have any issues with that there <laughs> Oh, this is way better. Okay. Yeah, the, the spray painting is upside down, but is that as high as it can go? How much is above that? Yeah, actually, you could just do it right side up. That way the spray paint is, uh, you know, facing the right direction. OCD. Yeah, you know, that way we we get good brand recognition through the front bumper there. But yeah, that looks, that looks good. Cut this nice fall right bracket off. Custom connecting our radiator. Yeah, something something right about right there is what we're gonna be looking at. Okay. It can go forward more if you need it. Yeah, well I was planning on it so it wouldn't sit like directly against that bar right there. So if we have essentially our angle cut out there, we can just take a little bit more out of that bumper and move it forward. Scratch up that OEM clear. There are some, yeah, people that are not very happy with what we're about to do to this OEM bumper right now. Any more floor floor? Would you have to modify the cast bar? No, I mean, I think that that's fine there. Like I said, we'll just basically build those end tanks so it completely fills up yeah. the bumper and utilizes the whole opening there and everything. With that volume. Yeah, and then let's come in from the top here. We've got a lot of space in between that crash bar so we can get a duct up above for the fans into that opening there. So I think that this is gonna work like I was hoping. We just got to let Josh do his thing here, start cutting, welding, and we'll see what we end up with.
Josh is doing a great job executing the, you know, just overall vision and then putting his own spin on it where it needs to be as he is just cutting and fabricating and making all of this stuff work. It looks like the cooling system is going to lay out like I was hoping. I'm going to let him work his magic on that. And then in the next video, we're going to have a lot more of the completed fabrication you kind of get the rough idea of how it's all going to go together and it does look like everything is going to work and we are going to go ahead and just get everything wrapped up and then in the next video also we're going to be tackling some of the wiring and basically getting this thing back to the point where it is roadworthy and can power itself I apologize that this video took a while to get out. Obviously, the mounting was a little bit more complicated than we originally anticipated. So it just took a couple extra weeks to get the car up here, let Josh kind of start figuring stuff out and basically just get it into place. Obviously, this is a swap that has not been done very many times there's a couple 240s out there that have had viper motors through the years but there's really no information on them so we're figuring it out as we go appreciate you guys uh joining us on the journey here look forward to more content about the viper 240 sx as well as all the other projects at the shop and we will see you in the next video